Welcome everybody, welcome, very excited to be here today. My name is Morgan and I am here the community manager at Behavior working on Meet Your Maker. So we've just presented to you Meet Your Maker through the Behavior Beyond event. You've seen a little bit of it, but today we're going to be diving into the world of Meet Your Maker and we will be showing you some gameplay. So it's very exciting. You will be able to, of course, play the game very soon because we'll be going through a close play test. And in order to join, you can already go on the website and sign up for the playtest. Very easy. Just go there, sign up, join us, play the game. So to talk about Meet Your Maker, I'm not alone today. I'm joined by amazing people who've been working on the game throughout many years now. And I'm joined by Ash, who is our creative director. Then I'm also joined by Inuk, who is our a game designer and he is our building expert. And then I'm joined by Pierre, who is our lead game designer and he is our rating expert. So we've just revealed Meet Your Maker to the world. Very exciting. It's the first time we're seeing the game. And I want to learn a bit more about how you feel to be here today. Can you tell us a bit more about that, Ash? Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say just how excited we are to reveal Behavior Interactive's newest original game, Meet Your Maker. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to tell you all about our take on building and raiding. Uh, the game's been in development for a while now, and we're still quite a long way away from the end. But we're going to be showing you some of our work from the latest build of our game. Well, that's exciting to hear. I want to hear a bit more about what you feel about this, Pierre. Can you tell us? Absolutely. So, like, on my side, like everyone here, I'm super happy to finally be able to reveal the game, start getting some activity and feedback on it from the community. I'm especially interested in seeing the reception of our rating gameplay and kind of what people are thinking about that. Ah, oh, that's cool. And we'll be seeing you a bit more later to talk about rating. Oh, yeah. Now I want to turn to you now, Inuk. Can you tell us more? Absolutely. So on my side, I'm eager to see what the community has in store for us once they put their hand on the tools we provide for them. I want them to build beautiful outposts and I want them to build deadly outposts. <laughs> well, that's all very, very exciting. And I cannot wait to go through our event and everything we have in store for you today. So as I mentioned you know, in the in a bit earlier, we will have a playtest. You will be able to play this game. You will be able to try it. And the playtest is actually coming on the 23rd of August. So it's coming yeah. very, very soon. So stay tuned because we'll share with you how you will be able to sign up to our close playtests. So before we dive into gameplay, because I know you're very excited about seeing the game, I want to understand a little bit more about what Meet Your Maker is all about and what makes Meet Your Maker Meet Your Maker. So I'm going to turn to you, Ash, and please, can you tell us a little bit more? Give us an overview of what the game is. So Meet Your Maker is a futuristic first-person building and raiding game where every level is built by players for other players. And you're going to be able to switch between these two roles, either building deadly, deadly maze-like outposts filled with lethal traps and guards, or gearing up for methodical fast-paced raiding and trying to tackle these player-built creations. It's two very different gameplays that come together into one core game. So on one side, you've got the building, where you'll strategically be building the deadliest outpost you can to try and kill trespassing players. It's creative, cunning, and thoughtful gameplay. And then on the other side, you've got the raiding. It's completely different, and this is where you're going to raid these player-built outposts. You're going to die, <laughs> retry, adapt, and eventually overcome the challenge that's in front of you. And it's really dynamic and methodical. Uh, and both building and raiding can both be done in co-op, which is great. Uh, and of course, at the heart of the whole experience beats the user-generated content that really connects players, brings the whole thing together, creates variety and replayability, and is endlessly entertaining in the way that only your community can build for you. Wow. So you were mentioning raiding, right? And I want to turn to you, Pierre, because I want to learn more about raiding in Meet Your Maker. Tell us more, please. Yes, let's talk about raiding. Raiding is all about action. It's surprising. It's brutal. Your goal when you're, when you're raiding is to get the, into the outpost, steal the genetic material, and get out of there without dying, or with dying at least the least amount of time as possible. This will be challenging since every outpost is player built and does very unique and different. Every raid is different. In order to succeed as a raider, you'll be able to fully customize your loadout. You do that by picking, up, picking a suit, 
with up to three perks, equi equipping yourself with two weapons from the range, melee, and defensive weapon category. And finally, you will be able to complement your loadout by picking two hardware consumables that will be able to complement your play styles. Every Raider also comes equipped with a grappling hook and it comes equipped that, that is very useful to avoid danger and also reach the higher ground. It was important for us from the beginning uh, when we decided to make Meteor Maker that the game was very accessible to all types of player and offered like support all types of play style. So whether you want to be slower calculated or faster daring, the game offers you the tools to do that. Raiding is methodical. You must be on your toes because everything in there is out to kill you and you'll die in one shot. So every death also reveals a new strategy for you to learn from, adapt and survive. All right. Well, I'm getting to know a little bit more about raiding, but of course raiding is linked to building, right? Because every outpost is created by the community. So I want to turn to you, Inuk, and I want to learn more about building. So can you tell us a little bit more? Absolutely. So building is all about creating a perfect death trap to kill other players. So as Pia was mentioning, raiding is quick. It's fast-paced. Contrary to building, uh, to raiding, building is done at your own pace. Players will not raid your outpost until you are ready, until you activate the outpost and put it online. While you're building, you will become a devious mastermind in order to kill the trespassing players. To kill them, you'll need a combination of both strategic and creative thinking in order to lure and outwit the raiders. You will start by purchasing a plot of land. You're going to build up the structure, and then you're going to fortify it using traps and guards. You'll be able to record the guards on patrols in order to surprise and flank the player. When you're ready, and only when you're ready, you can activate your outpost and matchmake it online. That's when players will start to raid it, and that's when you start getting those sweet, sweet kills. <laughs> well, I got to learn a little bit more about, you know, the core gameplay of Meet Your Maker, but I want to understand the story behind it because we are in this awesome set, so of course it's related. So tell us more about the story behind Meet Your Maker. Meet Your Maker is set on Earth in the far future and as you can see, the <laughs> world is dying. And this is a story of survival of the entire human race. Uh, humanity has now come to the brink of extinction after the world was devastated by a genetic disease. But there is still hope, and it comes in the bodies of some ancient dead people who still have uncorrupted genetics in their bones that you can extract and bring back. And your goal is to head out into the wasteland, extract this genetic material from your plot of land, or going to steal it from other people's outposts. So now that we learn a little bit more about the game, we're going to go through some gameplay. Uh, we're going to go through a full rating and building session. So first, I want to understand what we have in front of us right now. So can you tell us what is going on, Ash? All right, so welcome to the sanctuary, your home and safe haven. And it's from here that you set out to engage in either the building or the raiding gameplay. Now, because the game is asynchronous, you can choose how you want to play either the raiding or the building, depends on what you're in the mood for at the time. It's also the home of a character known as the Chimera. Now the Chimera is the focal point of the sanctuary and everything that happens here is done for the Chimera. The Chimera was the one who brought you to this world and it instructs you on how you have to survive and survival is the key. And the first thing the Chimera tells you is that the world is almost dead and from here it's up to you. Your goal is to head out and bring genetic material back to try and improve the Chimera and perhaps one day save the world. To help you in the task, you have these five advisors. These are clones that are created by the Chimera to help you. And they're really important as they're the way you gain all your new equipment for raiding and building. Each one has their own story to tell and it's through them that you'll learn a little bit more about what has happened in the years that you have missed and they will also help you in your goal to find the genetic material. So out of the windows here, you'll see the wasteland, this disease-ravaged landscape where nothing human can survive. Out there in the remains of a few dead, ancient bodies might lie a cure for the disease that has brought the world to the brink of extinction. Deep in that disease belt lie the sites where the genetic material is found, and it's up to you to build an outpost to extract it. Or, someone's got there first, it's time to suit up and go and steal it from them. Mm -hmm. So you're going to bring this stream of genetic material back to the sanctuary and use it to level up each of these advisors. 
This in turn makes the Chimera stronger and the Chimera will reward you with equipment, either traps and guards for building or suits, weapons and hardware for raiding. So this is the command center. The command center is a very important part of your hub. It is from here that players will be able to pick out posts to raid or build. On the raid map, outposts will be categorized by size, difficulty, and type of genetic material that they will yield. We're now going to enter Metuchen, a medium difficulty outpost built by Anuk, which is bound to be a great one. Ah, so here we enter a raid. This is what you see. Every time you enter a raid, you land, you land on this a landing pad a short distance away from the outpost. You're in a safe zone. While in a safe zone, nothing can harm you. It's, it provides you with the opportunity to change your loadout if you so want to. You can get a good view of the outpost. In the case of this one, it's obviously quite impressive. Around us, we notice the wasteland, but I'm, what I'm really interested in is what's inside this outpost in the middle of this plot of land there. On the left is the shipping station that is used to send the genetic material back to the sanctuary. Every outpost has one. We'll come back to it soon. Meet your maker controls are very intuitive and super accessible. We have a jump, a double jump, and a grapple, you know, to add mobility. It, it was important for us from the beginning that the game was very easy to pick up and play. Out there is nothing. This is what's left of the world, basically a land of death. Now that I know that this outpost is out to get me, I gotta be careful. It's always a good idea to kind of scope the area, the exterior of it, kind of get a, a bearing of the land and find the entrance. This is the harvester. It brings the genetic material from deep within the outpost to the shipping station. If I wanna find the genetic material inside the outpost, I can follow it and what is it, and I'll kind of know exactly uh, where the gen mat is. So I'm, I'm gonna just follow him kind of look around, make sure there's no traps around that are gonna be able to take me out. I know there's bound to be some danger around here. Ah, here, my danger indicator informs me that there was a hidden bolt shot trap in the corner. I was able to quickly dodge it. The bolt shot trap is a long range trap that spots the player in front of it and it will shoot straight. You just gotta avoid the volley of arrows that comes out of it. Here I spot this other bolt shot. Ammo is scarce in the wasteland. A ranged weapon, have and ranged weapon have limited ammo. If you fire a projectile weapon, you want to be you want to be sure to retrieve your projectiles in order to be able to reload and use it again. Oh, there was a clever trap combo here, placed uh, by Inuk I would, that I was able to survive. We saw the bomb ejector releasing a series of bouncing bombs. Those are nasty because you never never know where they're going to end up. Below was my first encounter with two guards. These are the enforcer guards, the range units that challenge the player at mid range. I'm able to shoot the first one and grapple to the second one and take it out. So what you're going to see here is a cache that contains a whole lot of uh, the building material that you're going to use later in the game to build all your outposts. And what's really interesting about these is the builders have them placed on the plot of land before they start building. So they can use them as a lure for the raiders because they know the raiders are going to want to come and get this precious resource. And so they can set traps around them and all kinds of different things. Exactly. So here, continuing, I'm able to get back into it. I spot this other bolt shot trap, probably aiming at, hoping to get me in the back. I was able to take it out. <laughs> here we have the, a, new, a new trap also. It's called the incinerator. This trap looks amazing. It's, it's special because it will trigger multiple times. Too many of these in tight quarters and you'll be toast quickly. I'm able to take it out here. Ah. And here I get killed by a two trap combo. I got grappled by the iron claw that grabbed me and pulled me into the area of the other trap that is the impaler, which swiftly took care of me. So now that I know a bit more about this outpost that I'm facing, I will, I will go ahead and modify my loadout a little. First, I will go and remove my Fury's Edge sword for a more and replace it for a more defensive weapon, the Arc Barrier. The Arc Barrier is amazing because it lacks offensive capabilities, but it gives me that little extra survivability that I want by creating an invulnerability bubble around me for a short time. I will also go ahead and remove my blast grenade and replace it with the spike drive, which gives me a bit of a speed boost when I need to you know, get out of dodge quickly. Now, the most important thing you need to know about restarting an outpost is that everything resets. All the traps, all the guards, they're all gonna reset. And every time you die, this happens. 
But every time you die, you're also going to gain the most important thing of all, which is knowledge. And with this knowledge, you're free to move much faster back through the outpost. You're going to know the traps, where they happen, and how to deal with them. You can use a grapple hook to go even faster to get you back to where you were, uh, which Pierre is doing. And now you're going to come into a room. You're going to have these guards. He's going to use his new loadout here. You're going to see him using the arc barrier to deflect those, those shots uh, and make very quick work of these guards. And then soon enough, he'll be right back where he was, about to tackle this particularly uh, nasty trap combo in the build here. But again, he knows about it now. It's all fine. He's going to take care of it and he's going to move on. Okay, here we see the appearance of our first melee unit, the Warmonger. It's a very imposing unit that will rush you and attempt to slice you up with his bladed arm. And here's another Warmonger. This one is modified with plating armor that gives it extra survivability. In this case, you have to break the armor, reveal the flesh, and then shoot another shot to be able to get the kill. Both guards and traps can be customized in various ways to alter their basic behavior. Here, moving ahead a little. Oh, I'm able to, yes, this is where I use the arc barrier, or the flash barrier, I should say. Deploys a, a small shield of invulnerability around me. From the safety of them, I'm able to take out these two guards. I retrieve my ammo, able to move a little further into the outpost. And finally, I reach the objective. This is the reason why the player is there. You want to grab this, escape with it, and then with the least amount of deaths possible mm -hmm. and bring it back to your sanctuary so you can level up your advisors and unlock the new progression. Now I have to be careful because the moment I grab this, the outpost will go into second wave. What, what appears there is that once you grab the, once I grab the gen mat, this new trap appeared, this new guard appeared, challenging me even further. The outpost alarms are blaring and that means that the new traps and guards can become active everywhere. Now that I got the gen mat, my, prim my primary goal is to leave the outpost, obviously without dying. And as a raider, you always have to remain careful until you're officially made it out. Because even if you have the gen mat, the player, if, the, if you die during this exit, you will have to restart the outpost from scratch, as, as Ash was saying. No time is wasted, however, and even if you die and you retry, you will keep all of your resources and you'll be able to kind of just keep trying again. Clearly, Inuk has put a lot of traps here out on the way out and it's dangerous for me. So I believe I will be using my spike drive very shortly in order to be able to escape and kind of bypass all the traps that are on the way out and kind of make my way out. You're not getting me this time enough. <laughs> and here I think I do the double jump out of there and here we go. I finally made it out. That was a really fun outpost. Thank you. Good job. So finally, as the raider, you're able to give the Builder props, basically give him some accolades. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and give Inuk an ingenious and fun accolade for this one. So now that we've been through raiding, we've learned a lot more about raiding. Thanks to you, Pierre. We want to go through building because, of course, you know, if there is raiding, there is also building because every outpost is created by someone. So we want to turn to you now, Inuk, because you're a building expert. So I want to know all about building. I want to. Share all your secrets, so come on, tell us. <laughs> all right, so welcome to building. This is a freshly bought plot of land. So as you can see, it's, it comes up with a couple of blocks already in there, probably legacies from another time. Um, what we're gonna be focusing on for now is that little dotted line, that is the harvester path. This is the, the path that the harvester will take between the extractor that we see on screen here and the shipping station that we saw at the entrance. So that path is very important because this is how you're going to be preparing your outpost. This is probably the path the raider will take to get to that, out, that gen mat. So you want to build it up. You want to be able to modify it. So by placing down new blocks, you, it's possible for you to change that path. Keep in mind that the harvester will always try to use the shortest path possible. So by removing blocks, adding blocks, adding some uh, obstructions in there, will make that path change. If you break that path, it will become red. And at that point, we're gonna give you some hints as to what's wrong with the path. And you can remove that block and bring it back. Ooh, I really like this menu with all the different blocks. I like the colors, the variation. I'm all about making the outpost my own, right? I'm all about fashion, it's very visible. So of course, I love to make the outpost my own. So the fact that we have different style already, really liking it. 
So right now I'm using mostly one single blob because I'm trying to do something very specific here. I've got something in my mind. I'm got, not gonna reveal to you what it is yet because as I'm building, you're gonna see it. But that's the greatest part of Meet Your Maker is we're gonna give you as much tools as we can so that you can create your own stuff. We want the builders out there to have as much fun as possible to create outposts that represent them or maybe not them, but something they wanna show people. So as you can see, I finished the front side of the outpost, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the whole structure. We're gonna prepare everything. So everything is built now. Uh, we focus on the front side. We're gonna be preparing for the next step. So now it should be ready. So we're heading back into the outpost. The path is valid. What we want now is to fortify that first room. As you can see, it's pretty open. So what we wanna do is we want to point the player into a direction. So we'll be using the corrosive cube in this example to kind of deny area for the player. So we'll be pushing that player and we'll also be using some blocks. So the idea here is that we're gonna try to use some different types of traps. We've got short range traps, we've got long range traps, we've got traps that are in this case harmless to the player, but that iron claw will be able to pull the player into another set of trap. In this case, we're gonna be putting down an impaler. On top of that, we're gonna be putting the bomb ejector because what we want is a long range trap with chaotic output. So let's try out this setup. So here Inuk is doing something very important. He's testing his outpost. Testing your outpost is the first layer of feedback that you will get about the effectiveness of your defenses. You literally put yourself in the shoes of the raider and experience the outpost as if the raider would be doing it. Here we can see that Inuk's latest setup is proven to be pretty effective. So it's not a big setup and there's still a bit of room left to add some stuff in there. So what I wanna do is give the impression to the player that I forgotten a small hole on the left side. So I'm gonna try to lure the player outside the main path into this section here. So using a short range trap, the impaler and a long range trap, I'm doing a combo here, hoping to get a kill. But if the player is quick, the player might jump out. And we've got here a, a corrosive cube waiting and I'm gonna be adding a incinerator right here, hoping to fry the player that manages to get outside of that range. And just for good measures, let's just add an impaler there, hoping the player will back up into it. Again, we're gonna be heading into testing, trying to see if that setup is gonna be working as I hope it will. Well, I think what this is a really good example of is just how iterative the building is. Uh, with each trap setup that you create, you can swap backwards between building and testing out, and you can try out each one of your setups as you go along. And of course, it's never just about one trap or one guard. Every setup is all about the combination of different things and how they work together. And being able to test really allows you to go in and make sure that all the traps are performing exactly the way that you want and would expect. And this allows you to make sure that only when you're really ready, you set your outpost loose on the world. Yeah, so we're pretty much done with that first room. We're gonna wrap it up here for this one and we're gonna get prepared for the next part. We are now a bit further inside the outpost and this room is pretty big. So what I wanna do, I don't wanna break it down into smaller chunks, so we'll use AI guards in order to defend it. So I'll use the enforcer, which is a mid-range guard, put it behind the path, hopefully shooting the player in the back. So yes, guards, guards. Guards provide a powerful outpost defense. As opposed to traps or snap to the grid, guards are dynamic. They have an AI, they will force the player to move, and they accomplish this by repositioning to keep the player in the line of sight and keeping the pressure on them. Here we see that Inuk is placing a warmonger behind this column, probably hoping to surprise unsuspecting raiders. When placing guards, you're able to rotate them in any direction that you want, and interacting with the guards, players can equip different types of augmentations on them. Here, a uh, plating is put on this warmonger. This offers builders a multitude of ways to surprise the raider and ultimately get the kill on them. So looking a little higher up in this area, Inuk places a Hornet. Hornet is an amazing unit. It's one of uh, the units we've seen seldom so far in the, in the playthrough, but it's amazing because it can fly around in the air and shoots a slow moving projectile that has homing properties. Another strong point of the Hornet is that since they can fly, there's really no place that they can't go. Another really cool feature that we're seeing here in Meteor Maker is the ability for us to record guards. 
recording allows the builder to really record the patrol path of their guards and really orchestrate the defense of the guards within the outpost. Individually, traps and guards are fairly simple to counter. It's really through the combination of traps and guards together that a builder will be able to surprise the raider, challenge them, and get the kill on them. So I think we've got a pretty good setup here, so we're ready for the next section. Here we are now in the last room of the outpost. It's the gen mat room. So as you can see, I've already placed down some guards, some traps. Defense is ready. What we're gonna be doing is making this room pretty. Right now I'm using a deco that replaces the face of the block you put them on. This is really cool because it can create a different atmosphere to the whole room. We have different types of decos and we also have decals which I like to think of as paint because it actually adds paint on top of the existing structure. It can also be added on top of some decos. What we see here is another type of deco. This deco is going to be added on top of the existing block. So it allows you to mix and match different styles. Yes, give me all that deco. I'm all about <laughs> decoration. I really like the fact that I can make a room my room. I can decorate it, take the time to do it as well because you have all the time in the world to build. You know, you're yeah. chill, you can do it. And, you know, for me, it's really exciting. And I also appreciate the fact that you can use those elements to distract the raider and then you have a trap and here it is, you have the kill because he was looking at this beautiful decal that you put just right there. And of course, right now it's a selection that we have, but it's gonna grow throughout the time. You know, we're gonna have more decals, more paint, more everything. So that's super exciting to see that. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> I think deco is one of the great part that we have in the game, because as we were saying, it's not only attractive, it's, all, it's also part of the gameplay. So now we're done with the whole building of the, uh, the outpost and we're ready to activate the outpost and get some raiders to try it out. We are now back in the sanctuary. The outpost has been off offline for a while. Raiders have raided it, so we're heading into the replay station because we want to watch what happened while they were raiding. So we're going to be watching a raider called Sour Plant raid our outpost. What's really cool about this feature is that we're going to be looking at how Sour Plant is going to be raiding the outpost. Where is Sour Plant looking? How that player is going to be behaving, moving around in the outpost. It's a really good opportunity to understand if the outpost is as successful as you hope it will be. And on top of that, if you notice that there's some things you want to change, you can always exit out of the replay, head back into building, do some modification. The outpost is, outpost is going to be taken offline while you're doing the modifications, but as soon as you're out, you can put it back online and continue getting those raiders to attack the outpost and earning more kills. One thing I would like you to look at is at the top of the screen, there's a timeline. And on that timeline, there are a couple of skulls up on there. Those are the death markers. This is the time where the player died. So you can always use the skip ahead to go into that specific moment and watch the raiders die. Or you can watch in between because you might want to know how the player managed to evade the trap, how they managed to take out your defenses. This will give you clues on how you want to update your outpost. A good thing to know is that you can also watch your friends because you're going to be able to invite your friends into raiding their, your outpost. And this is a really fun feature because after that, you can have a laugh with your friends. They can give you tips on how to modify the outpost, make it better. So replays is a great tool for builders. Yeah, the replay is another really cool feature of the sanctuary. But the main feature of the sanctuary are these five advisors and all the cool stuff that you can unlock from them, whether it's traps and guards or weapons, suits and consumables. Each one of these characters is a master of their field. Indeed. And so now, coming out of the replay, Enoch knows how to make his outpost more deadly. He's obtained enough resources to unlock a new trap, and each trap can, can be modified, basically alter their basic properties. Some of them can be, have their range increased, others can have their projectile modified. Overall, they give the player more opportunity to surprise and outwit the players. So Enoch decides to purchase the Plasma Sentinel here, which is an amazing trap that will target player around 360 degree. It's a great trap for to pressure raiders in open areas. So I'm heading back to the command center and you'll notice that the command center is flashing red and there's a skull on top of it. This means that I've got an outpost that earned some kills. So we're gonna head back into the outpost and you can see I've earned 15 kills, which means there's probably more than one raider that died in there. So that's good news. As I'm heading back into the outpost, I've just unlocked that new trap. So I want to find a good place to set up that trap and have better defenses. So I'm looking for death markers. 
there are these things that float around and death markers will indicate where raiders died. If you look at a death marker, you will see who died and how they died. In this case, the Impaler was a pretty good setup. I've earned two kills out of a couple of raiders. That's pretty good. You want to look for a lot of density in those death markers. That's how you know that your setups are good. I like to think of it as a heat map. The more there are, the better the defense is. So when you enter a room and that room is kind of empty, you know that something's lacking in this room. You can leave it as is if you want to have a breather for the breather, because sometimes that what, that's what you want, or you can start and adding some more defenses. And I'm thinking this open area here is a great place to be using that new Plasma Sentinel. So I'm going to be putting down two of those traps. Hopefully the player will not be able to take them both out before he gets hit by one of the shots. So I think this is going to be adding pretty good defenses to this room and completing that whole room. Well, we've been through a lot of, you know, building with you, Inuk. We know everything about building right now, but I want your final thoughts on building. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. I don't know if I told you everything about building, but <laughs> we went through one of the types of builds I like to do. You can approach building in different ways. So in this one, what I did was I started by building up the facade, then the structure. I've updated the path by creating the rooms and putting that harvester all over the place, adding some combos with traps and guards recording stuff. Then I went in and decode the whole thing. And once it was up, what I like to do is head to the replay, watch how people die, how they circumvent my defenses, head in. If I can unlock a new trap, a new mod, update the outpost, put it back online. And what's really cool about the whole building in Meet Your Maker is that you can own multiple outposts. So once I'm done with building, I can go raiding or I can just go right back into building and start a new outpost, build it up, put it online. So it's an endless loop, but it's always satisfying to get those kills. And this concludes our gameplay demo. Now it is really up to you to come and join us and experience the world of Meet Your Maker by yourself by joining us in our playtest, which will start on August 23rd. All you have to do is either scan the QR code that you're seeing right now on your screen or go on meetyourmakergame.com and sign up. Additionally, starting today, join us on our social media to vote for exclusive decals that we designed just for you. Vote for the one you like the most and it will be selected to be included into the game once the game is live. Anyone who sign up starting from today up to 3rd of October will receive these exclusive decals. So go and vote. Select the one you love the most and it will be added onto the game. It's up to you. So don't forget to sign up for the close play test. Now we're going to be going through some co-op. So it's live. It's very exciting. So Inuk build an outpost for us. And Pierre and Ash are going to try to survive. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. Good luck, guys. Okey Let's give this a go. Thanks. All right. What have we got here? <laughs> well, this does look like an Inuk outpost. Some sort of Medusa thing going on. Pierre, what have you got loadout-wise? I got the Arc Barrier and the Wastelander Harpoon Launcher. There's no, right, nothing so I'm on the scouting answer. the interior here. So far, so good. Yeah, well, I mean, so far, so good in the sense of no traps, but yeah. I don't like rooms with no traps. You know what happens when you get out of those outposts, right? Yeah, okay, well. Oh, oh. Harvester coming in. Okay, so we're on the right route, that's for sure. It's at least a good start. Go, 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 just go, go ahead. <laughs> go, go. Yeah, I'll, I'll go like the arc barrier. Preemptively defending. Oh, swordsman, oh, okay. swordsman in the legs. Life. Swordsman. swordsman behind us, swordsman behind us. And, Wait. ah. Okay, I'm good, we're good, we're good, I'm in charge. We got it, we got it, we got it. Where did they come from? I got you. Let me see if they oh. Oh, you. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. Oh, you nearly got a harpoon in your face. <laughs> direction. All right. Ah, nice room. Oh, watch out, trap on the top left. You I got it. nearly yeah. got me. Resources to pick up. Okay, Harvey's going down there. All right, all right, all right, all right. So no worries, right. guys. There's yeah. no more traps here. You can just pick it up and yeah, go. Well, I don't like being pinned in at this corner, and I don't like Harvey pinning me. In. Grab the gen mat. I'll, yeah, I'm gonna get the defenses. gen mat. I'm just gonna wait for Harvey to clear the clear the area. I don't want him to snag me. Let me ready? grab it. I'll drop ready? my shield. Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one. Go. Whoop! Stuff on the floor. Stuff on the floor. Oh, oh my hornet incident! Oh. Ah, I'm, I'm down. So I'm down. I'm down. I got it. Oh, maybe. 
Got to retrieve some ammo over here. Yeah, you got to come get me. I'm coming. Ah, right. Almost had you. You can do it. Come, come on. Again. It'll be good to get you this time. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, there we are. Okay. We got one kill so far, so that's okay. good. Yeah. You, sir, have been revived. Great news, great news. Watch out. Watch there's, out what? There's a bomb trap right above the gen mat. Where? And I'm out of projectiles. I need to find some ammo. Oh, you got loads of stuff you stuck in. <laughs> Look at your random bullets all over the roof. Yeah, let me, get, let me get this one because <laughs> I'm worried I'm going to. All right, I'm going to go get it. it. Wow, that's acid. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just getting my harpoon back and I in, interfaced with a corrosive cube in an unacceptable way. Reviving you again. Thank you. All right. Right, where were we? Ooh, All right, I got my death three. piston. Take that out. Let me grab the gen mat. I, I still don't have the gen, gen mat. I've got the gen mat. Do you have the gen mat? I was mat? very careful grabbing it because I know second wave traps might appear. I doubt it. Well, you so cleaned that room pretty well. One of your ammo up there, top right, by the way. Where? Oh, yeah, good point. Thanks. I mean, look at those walls. You guys did pretty good work on those guys. <laughs> I'm going to take this. I'll wait for you. Room. Where are you at? Okay, there oh, you are. Him, him, him. Oh, bomb trap in the back. Watch oh, out. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. That was close. Thanks for the. <laughs> Almost pulled one in. Okay, so that room is bound to have something right, in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we death. go. No, okay, you go, you go, you go. Have you got anything? I'm going to drop <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. Nice barrier. That has bombs coming in. Oops, watch out. Bomb. Watch out what? There was a cannon back bomb okay. right beside the. Yep. The oh, that's, that's down now. Grenading. Watch out. Good job. Okay, what are we doing down here? We got it? Have we got this? Have we Here. got this? Yeah, we got this. Cannon back! Ah, oh, I shot him between the legs! What? Cannon back still in play! He's oh, down. Got I'm it. I'm down. I'm out of ammo. It's, it's all you now. It's all me? However, I've got, I got, I got a grenade. Let me throw a grenade. I got a grenade. Towards the exit. Do that. It's both throw grenades. There we go. Of that going wrong. <laughs> no chances taken. <laughs> Uh, no, now I got some harpoons some back. I mean, we just have to walk out this door, right? It's like it's uh, nothing never, more. Never. Yeah, I always walk out the door without looking. <laughs> it's always I've a got good idea. Something. What? Oh, oh, so close. Look at this. Where did they come from? We got it. I don't even know. Ooh, that, that was a good last one. Last defense has failed, but. All right. Oh, nice run, Ooh. guys. Good one, good one. Very okay. clever use of Get traps. We did it. Very good. Everything. I like that. Good, the, where were the hornets? They were like, I came around the corner from picking up the gen mat and there was just a wall of hornets coming out of the wall. I was using the holo cube in order to, I, I put a physical mod on it. So the invisible mod, which makes it like second wave. So before second wave, it's physical. So the hornets can't go out. So I recorded the hornets going in. And once you pick up the, the gen mat, second wave triggers and the hornets came out. And the yeah. same was true for the first room. So I prepared everything out, laid them d down, recorded them, and waited yep. for you guys to come out. That bomb trap after you grabbed the gen mat was also very tricky to... <laughs> I was able finally to shoot it, get the gen mat, get out of there. Really cool outpost. Thanks. Very nice. Well, that was co-op. I really enjoyed that. I love the fact that I can invite my friends to play with me and go through outposts. And that's it for today. I really want to thank Pierre and Inouk for taking us through building and raiding, and of course, Ash for going through the essence of Meet Your Maker. Do not forget to sign up for the close play test and get a chance to be selected to come and play the game. You know, we're waiting for you. Also, join our social media to know anything about Meet Your Maker. Again, thank you for being here. We hope you enjoy the show, and we'll see you very soon.